Today is episode 523 of The Grid, and our topic is overprocess your photos and sell, sell, sell. Eric, the real Rocket Man Kuna is once again off gallivanting somewhere, but my guest is French photographer and Photoshop and Lightroom guru, Serge Remily. I've got some news, we got some cool prizes, and it all starts in just 36.5 seconds. Let's go! The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. Scott Kelby here. I got a very, very special guest, a dear friend and colleague, amazing photographer, um, a guy who sells an amazing amount of prints all over the world and just one of the coolest guys around. Please welcome Serge. How you doing, buddy? Good, Scott. Thank you so much for having me on the grid. <laughs> it is amazing. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. That's I love when you're over French out <laughs> there. He actually is French. He's from Paris. That's where I first met. We first met in Paris. That's right. Gosh, it has to be almost 10 years ago. Yes. It was long, long time ago. Actually, I think it was 11 years ago. 2010. Yeah. Yeah, 2010. And now I live in the United States of America and speak like this, you know. <laughs> I stub the whole French nonsense. <laughs> oh, and you guys, you know, sir, so I don't, I don't really have to tell you a whole bunch about him. But uh, anyway, he's here today. We're very happy to have him as our guest. And he's got a, he, a really great topic today. And it's so poignant. It's, and I, I was talking about this topic just a few weeks ago at the NECCC conference up in Am Amherst, Massachusetts. And then and Serge and I just had a long talk about it at lunch. And it is a wonderful topic, which is why <laughs> overprocessing your photos makes them sell, sell, sell. So that's going to be our topic. I got a few little uh, things that we got to do, just housekeeping, keeping stuff real quick. And then we're going to unpack all this. Serge is going to share some amazing information. He was sharing some of the stuff with me at lunch and I'm just like, wow, it doesn't surprise me, but I think there's not that many people that realize or, or get to talk about the topic we're going to talk about today. So I think this could be really helpful to you guys and very eye-opening. I think that's the word for today's show. This is going to be an eye-opening show for a lot of people. So that's number one. Uh, we do have some giveaways today. Let's go over the giveaways real quick. We're going to give away a Platypod accessory kit. So all of the goodies that you want for your Platypod. I know you already have a Platypod. This is what you need next, the multi-accessory kit. We're giving one of those away. I got a brand new book. It is on press. It's called How Do I Do That in Lightroom. It's the second edition. It's got all the new masking stuff, all the new stuff. You can get the um, the ebook is available now, but uh, if you want the actual paperback, it's on press, and it's probably going to be another three or four weeks because it always is. But we're going to give away the actual print book today, so you'll get it as soon as it comes off press. Then we have my book, The Travel Photography. We're going to give away this one. It's the Travel Photography book. It's about travel photography okay <laughs> what else are we giving away we're giving away uh, rah, rah, rah. my other book <laughs> this this thick one the lightroom classic book for digital photographers we're also giving away a copy of boris effects optics we're gonna great plug-in killer plug-in uh, eric kuna just did a whole class on it and we're getting it on optics 2022 it's a ridiculous plug and it's incredible we're going to use uh we're going to give away a copy of on one effects which is what i use as my finishing move uh we're going to give away that's it that's all we're giving away today so just be happy with that so, <laughs> so how do you enter all you have to do is leave us a comment and just but but when you leave us a comment just tell us what you want to win so we don't send you the platypod accessory kit if you don't have a platypod right so just say i want the accessory kit i want the travel book i want whatever i want the boris effects i want the on one so let us know what you want and we would love to send it to you no matter where you are in the world all right what else photoshop world is coming up photoshop world conference is coming up uh, next month and uh, it is um, at go to photoshopworld.com. The schedule is there. The instructors are there. We have an incredible roster of instructors this year. Just an incredible. Tons of instructors. Lots of great people. And that's it. It's going to be all online. So you can watch it even if you're in France. That's right. As many of you are. And, but, uh, and I got honored to be part of it again this that's year. That's right. Serge is one. Look at all. Look at this instructor roster. Wow. Look at this. A lot of look people at that a I lot admire. of. A lot of, lot, a of, lot of great instructors. And they're right in there's there, Serge. That's height. I'm here. Thank you so much, Scott. It's yeah. amazing. But, 
<laughs> anyway, uh, it, it's going to be great, and it's all online, so you can see it. It's, it is August 30th through September 1st, and it's three tracks, three days. It's just a ton of stuff. I'm very excited. Can't wait to share some of the new stuff. You know, the, some of the stuff they've been doing in Lightroom, and you're a Lightroom guru from, from way back, mm -hmm. uh, and you always push Lightroom to the limits. Yes. Like, I've learned many things from your post-processing uh, over the years, and, and you really do some really, really interesting stuff, but you got to love this masking. The new mask. Oh yeah, stuff. I love it. You know what I love the most about it is because mm. I read it all my presets, and you can name the presets. So I have like, you know, I, I went to see Clyde Butcher um, a gallery in Venice, and I spoke to the guy who's been sh like doing his black and white for 17 years, and he says, you know, the secret is we burn the corners. And one thing I used to do is I used to, uh, you know, so I used to have like one gradient and from the f from the top of the image, one from the bottom for my black and white. Right. I love to have like. A big vignette yeah, effect. Yeah. And so when I met the Clyde Butcher guy, I started doing like three. So I created a preset and I have like a right corner, left corner, bottom, sky one, sky two gradients. And you can name them now with the new masking option. So you apply the preset and you can, you know, you have got you names. You can just click yeah. and really handy. And, uh, you know, you can just, because if you just use a vignette, it's, it's a round factor that's the same all around. And that's not how the masters do, no. do it. You know, they, nope. they got, I want the right corner a little bit darker. I want the left corner a bit less. I want the eyes to go here, you know. And you know who's been doing that for a while really, really well is, uh, you know, Mimo Madani. <sighs> He's the master. I mean, Mimo is. He is Mr. Black and White. Oh, Though, gee. I will say this. Your black and white stuff, you've done some photo books. And these are beautiful coffee table style books. Your black and white is phenomenal. Yes. And your black and white presets, by the way, are very good. I have your black and white oh, presets. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah, thank you. I have Serge's black <laughs> and white because they're very, very yeah. good. Well, I redid them after the masking thing came out with a lot more option, with a lot more local adjustment. You know, you told me this one day, which is when the – I remember when the Red Roll Circle came out, you were like, Serge, you're going to use that as a dodge and burn tool. And because that was not the purpose of, of the of the yeah. I don't think that you know Lightroom created this thinking. I use this a lot to just guide the eyes of the viewer. But Mimo takes the thing one next level because he does what I call extreme lone exposure, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Then he makes them into black and white, and the yep. result is stunning. Yeah, Mimo, I introduced you to Mimo because I met he him in, in Venice. He was like, My dream is to meet Scott Kelby. Well, there you go. And he's on your workshop. And now, 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 now he teaches workshops with me. Yeah, it's he's great. done classes for Kelby One, and he's teaching, and he's going to be teaching my workshop with me in Tuscany. Yeah. So in October, I'm going to Tuscany. Keep an eye on, on my, uh, I'll be announcing it to the public uh, later this week. So scottkelbyworkshops.com. Uh, if you get on the uh, email newsletter, you'll, you'll know tomorrow and have access to tickets tomorrow, uh, and then the rest of the public uh, after that that this weekend so Tuscany is out. the best I've never been in a place like Tuscany where I just came back from Tuscany and and it's just this rolling hills it's just I've you know even the Alps and other parts of south of France or even Yosemite which I really love there's something about Tuscany about the way the rolling hills is and you're going to oh, be yeah. in San Quico d'Arcia which is like the heart of heart I mean this this is a, a dream workshop well how did I find the hotel Serge told me. Here's, <laughs> here's the place to go. That, that's good enough for me. Yeah. Hey, we got some folks saying hi from all over. We got Steve from Panama City saying hi. D. Eric Owen from Fort Dodge. Uh, we got uh, Claudia from Toronto. We've got Kevin uh, says, hi, Scott and Serge from a stormy Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Michael's here from Nigeria. We're glad to have you, Michael. Uh, Jesse's here. Hey, Jesse uh, from uh, Wisconsin. Moses is here. KC in the house. <laughs> uh, Oscar's here from Southern Germany. Paulo from San Paulo, Brazil. Glad to have you guys here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we have a really interesting, really, really interesting uh, topic today. And we were talking about it, and it's, it's about selling prints. But I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Serge because he's got a, a really eye-opening story that I think is going to surprise some people. Uh, so let, let's let's yeah, let's so launch into it. Basically, here's the story. When I, I I've been doing photography for 17 years, Scott's been a big inspiration. Uh, but in in 2007 2008, I found Trey Radcliffe crazy tutorials on Photomatics and, and HDR, and I felt in love for HDR. And you know this sort of like really over processed look, or you know this uh, uh, you know this sort of impressionist kind of look in photos. I really loved it, I, and I went really hard. But every photographer I would show that work to would say, oh. It's over retouch. It's over process. And the, you told me a story, which I've heard this story many times, that if you tell, take 10 people that are non-photographers and you show them 10 photos and two of them are HDR, they're going to pick the HDR ones. Every oh, time. 
Yeah, over the non <laughs> right. But if you take the same ten photos and you go see ten professional photographers, they'll hate the HDR ones and yes. they'll love the natural thing, right? Anyways, in 2010, the first time I went to Photoshop World, I, I discovered the work of Peter Lick, uh, which I really liked. And what I loved about his work is that I kept getting comments on mine that it's like, it's beautiful, but did you do something to it? And I spent hours at Peter Lick galleries and I was listening to the people and they were saying, what a great mountain, what a great thing. Like nobody was talking about the over-processed aspect, although he does use his Photoshop, maybe not him, his assistant, but, <laughs> but you what? know, because, but... Um, it's really done well. Like it's very, you know, uh, yep. and I think one of the controversy about him is that he doesn't, he's not open about using Photoshop when he is, you know, but that's fine. I respect the guy. I mean, nobody's been sending more photos than him on planet Earth. So that's already an achievement. And I love that look of like, I love, I call the look the natural drama, which is natural and dramatic. So I spend the next five years perfecting the art of natural drama, making photos which are very dramatic, but look natural, where people are not going to respond like, Ooh, you did something to it as the first emotional response. Right. Anyway, my, so I work for Yellow Corner. In case you don't know what that is, there's 120 galleries around the world, uh, everywhere on the planet. They just opened one in, um, in California, actually. The first one in California like a month ago in uh, um, spring, 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 you know, um, the uh, desert place. Palm Springs? Palm Springs, in Palm Springs. They just opened one in Palm Springs. They opened one in Chicago, New Jersey, but it's all over Paris and Asia. And they said, we want you to go to Italy and make a whole series of photo uh, called Viva Italia of Venice, Florence. So I spent $10,000. I fly to Italy in one month shooting. I send the photos to the galleries and I don't hear back. I'm like, I just spent $10,000 in one month of my life doing these photos for you because you wanted them. And no answer. I keep answering. And he says, come and see me. So the CEO of the galleries, amazing guy, Alexander Metz, like, they have the biggest art gallery network in the world. Now, Yellow Corner is now the number one uh, uh, sellers of f photos in, on the planet. Number two is, um, is a German company. They have 36 galleries. But Yellow Corner's got 120, and they're opening 20 galleries this year. I mean, it's crazy. And they are making it quite affordable. It goes from $79 to about $2,000. It's not like super high end, very expensive. Anyway, it says, you know what? It says, it says, let me show you the best setting photos that we have had all time. And he shows me this photo. I don't know if I can show it on screen. I have it here. Uh, I don't know if people see my screen or... Yeah. There it is. So he shows me this photo. He says, that photo we made millions and millions of dollars with. And he says, I... And he starts telling me, like, I love your HDR stuff. Like, you're over, the, over you know, your sky replacement and all the stuff you used to do years ago. Why did you stop? And I tell him the whole Peter Leake story. He's like, I don't care about Peter Leake. This is the best setting photo of all time for us. Like, I couldn't believe how much millions of dollars we made with that photos. Now, I don't think, I think that's a straight out of camera. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was a weird day that day. All the balloons and the... Yeah, it's a straight up camera. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this has been, you know, Photoshopped to death, obviously. Yeah, and he rejected all my photos. He says, look, I, I want you photo photos to stand between the dream and reality. He says, everybody's got a photographer. People, when they come to my galleries, if they think they can take the photo, they won't buy it. It has to be like, you have to make something that's between the reality and the dream. So I reprocess 10 photos. I can show them really quick for him. In that spirit, so what I did is, so this is a shot that I, I, I was in Giza about th uh, in January and I didn't have that sky, so I went to Luminar. When I have to do like really crazy stuff, I always go to Luminar, Luminar and Aurora. So I did a bit of Aurora, a bit of Luminar. Then I did this one, I did a bit of scary placement, a bit of Aurora. Like I just went crazy. He wants crazy. This is crazy. This is the Rialto Bridge meeting the Rialto Bridge. So that's, it's a complete <laughs> illusion. But he loved it. It was like, yeah, it's going to sell a lot. This is like, you know, I, I, when somebody sends me that, I, I do a lot of teaching and say, that's all processed. But that's what he wanted. And I couldn't believe it. So this is a bit of a rod that's, you know, um, Positano, Amalfi Coast. Uh, well, this is infrared photography. It's different. I, I played around with a Hoya filter. I, I, this is just a test. We'll see if, he, if they're into infrared stuff. Mont Saint-Michel. You know, Mont a little bit of a raw rod to make it, you know, a little punchy. Uh, La Pangile. They just yep. repainted it, by the way. Oh, did they? Yeah, orange. Yeah, it used to be like brown. Now it's orange. Just finished the painting. I was there like three weeks ago for my workshops. And then uh, I just came back from Maine where yep. your son got married. My son just got married right yeah, at that lighthouse. Exactly. And so this is a version. This Okay, that's the same view. That's the natural drama. That's how I used to do it. And that's how he wanted me to do it. I added the birds from Luminar. That's the Luminar birds. You know, really? The, the Luminar birds. The Luminar birds. And the, and the Luminar birds. And 
look, you, you know, that, that's what the boss says. That's what the boss, he's the one selling. So I, I don't like when people respond to my work by saying, did you do something to it as the first emotional reaction? But if it sells, but you like the check that comes. I like the check. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the story about Alfred Hitchcock, you know, the very famous story where he, um, he, he you know, a journalist uh, interviews him and says, you know, you know, you're, you're accused a lot of, you know, doing very commercial movies. So, because Alfred Hitchcock back in the 50s was blockbusters. Like, that's what blockbusters used to be. Like, he was the most selling artist at the time. And, uh, and you know, are you not offended that, you know, uh, you're, you're being accused of not being artsy enough, you, you know, too commercial enough? And then Alfred Hitchcock answers, you know what? I cry when I go to the bank to cash my checks. <laughs> 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 hey, we're going to take a short break because I, I want to I want to point out I want to point out some of the things that Serge just said and I want to really pull them out because he he, he said a lot but there were some things in there that I want to hit upon. Uh, let's let's take a short pause and when we come back we're going to pick right up there with some of those things because he hit some points that are that are really eye opening. Stick around, we'll be right back. Don't go away. When I was young, my family used to live in the Philippines. There was a flood, and it flooded our house. So all of the photos that we had were gone. When we migrated to the US, recording family photos is like something that was really important for me. And once I started sharing the photos, my family really connected with it. It was something that they had lost, that they forgot they lost. They really see it as, oh, Mike's here, let's take photos. And some people may think that's bothersome, but I love it. The ones that I really love are the candid shots, them in their own world, and then I capture it. It's more than just taking a photo. It's like you're freezing the time. My name is Rob Foldy. I'd like to invite you to check out my new class on how to take awesome sports and action photos using just your iPhone. Maybe you've tried shooting with your phone before and you're frustrated because your, your content's just missing the mark a little bit. We're going to unlock all of the secret features that you need to know so that you can start getting better sports and action photos today. We're going to cover a lot of things in this class. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to cover everything from still photography and all the kind of various options we have there from regular still photos, we're gonna cover burst mode, live photos, we're gonna kind of move over into video a little bit and talk about how to quickly get to video right from your camera, how to take slow-mo videos. We're gonna talk about things like lens choices, how to use the, the different lenses that, that this iPhone or any other iPhone you might have are gonna have available to you. We're gonna talk about storytelling and how to not only get just the, the peak action moments, but also some of those in-between moments that really help you tell the story holistically from start to finish. We have a lot of really, really cool scenes here at this park. We're here at the, at the skate park. We also have baseball. We're working with some great models. We have some really great people that are just here enjoying the park that we're gonna get some content of as well. Come check it out. It's gonna be awesome. You're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna have a lot of fun. It's available exclusively on kelvyone.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, everybody. We're back. Uh, got a few more shout-outs real quick here. Blake's here from Atlanta. Blake says, I love Serge's post-processing. <laughs> Alex here. Serge is always a fantastic guest on The Grid. Absolutely. Gina says, uh, this, this it's difficult to find the right balance, but it can be so impressive even with a few tweaks. Uh, absolutely. Andres is here from... Uh, Anders is here from uh, cloudy Sweden. Wendy's from Michigan. Janine from San Diego. Clear and 72 degrees. Oh, nice. It's really hot here in Florida. And Mark says, hi, this is Mark from Luxembourg. Great to be live with you on the show. Yeah, Mark is a student of mine. He's really good. He's also, he got voted like in the top 10 best phone photographer of Luxembourg. Really? Yeah. All right. 
marketing. Oh, Luxembourg's wonderful. He's a teacher and loves photography and like really got, I've been coaching him for a couple of years. He's really good. First time I ever went to Europe, very first time as a young man, landed in Luxembourg. Luxembourg really? was my first entree, so I always have a like sweet spot for it. Um, all right, so some of the things that, that Serge was talking about here. So he's got this, and, and this is what, what I really want to impress upon you. You have a gallery owner, biggest gallery in the world, right? 120 galleries, more, 20 more coming online here. They're expanding in the U.S. You think that guy doesn't know what sells? Oh, yeah. He knows exactly what sells. And he's, he, he turns down the photorealistic images. He turns around and says, I want you to, to process them like you used to. Yeah. <laughs> let's put in the great skies. Let's do all these things and all. Because this is what sells. Yeah. I mean, you saw that picture of the kid with the balloons that sold millions of dollars worth of images. Millions, yeah. Millions, literally millions. So now, now you've got this, this gallery owner, and, and, and you can't argue with the results, right? Mm. They, they didn't become that big because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They know exactly what they're doing because they know what sells. But here's the thing, guys, and I talked about this at my, in my presentation at Amherst a couple of weeks ago, the NECC. Other photographers are not going to buy your work. Yeah, you said it. You said it so succinctly that if it's a photograph that another photographer thinks they can take, they're going to go. I'm not going to buy your photo. Let's go take it myself. Yeah, for for and and that's why you have to divorce yourself from what makes photographers like it, because photographers aren't going to be the ones that ever buy your photo. Yeah, they're not going to be the ones. People buy your photographs for all kinds of emotional reasons that don't have to do with the post-processing. We look at it through photographer's eyes. And the first thing we say is it's too sharp, it's too crunchy, mm -hmm. the sky's too dramatic, the colors are too mm -hmm. vibrant, and the rest of the world is going, and, and I make the check out to what, yellow corner, <laughs> right? And, 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 and this, yeah. But this is, this is what we do. Yeah. It is very hard, and Serge is doing something that is, is hard for him. He has his aesthetic of yeah. what is, yeah. this is what I like to shoot, and this is, I'm, I'm teaching, he teaches a photography community, right? His community is photographers. His students are photographers. Th that's a, a completely different aesthetic hmm. from what actually sells and makes money. And Serge's message is really, it's crystal clear. And the message comes from the gallery owner. If you want to sell images, give the people what they want. Hmm. Yeah. Give the people what they want. Now, and I'm going to make an, a music analogy because I'd like to. You know, it's like, I, I remember a quote, and, and now it's from, it's from the band Kiss. Ooh. And I don't remember, right, if it's from Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley or the both of them in an interview. But he said something really interesting. He's like, look, we play, we play the songs that people want to hear. We play their favorites. He goes, do you want to see the whole crowd sit down? <laughs> Say, here's a song from our new album. <laughs> Give the people what they want yeah paul mccartney said the same thing i went to uh one of his tour and it was you know 80 percent beatles you know oh yeah 20 a couple of new songs this but if i go there and i don't get back and you know and uh, you uh, want to hear the song hey i want to hear paperback writer uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i want to hear my favorite beatles songs and if i hear those then i'm happy and 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 the crowd's happy and people buy the prints and stuff. And guys, this is the stuff that sells. And like, I look at that picture, dude, I, I, can, I can hear the dollar signs. <laughs> I look at it and I go, is it overprocessed? Yes. And is it going to sell? Like crazy. And that guy knows. And so this is, an, this is a tough thing for us as yeah, photographers. It is. it is because I got so, I really felt it in love. I love when somebody, because I know what it takes to, you know, go to Maine, uh, you know, go three times in a row at a lighthouse to get the perfect light, get the perfect orange, the perfect exposure, the perfect composition. And, you know, and you're so proud and you just make it better even in Lightroom and, and you, you pull that off. And like, and, and then every other photo where I was like, oh, wow, you know, it's real. You know, you really made it. Because we know, you know, oftentimes, you know, you come to a place and it's the light, it's not great and you just have to come back another day. But with these tools, you can do, make anything. And uh, it kind of takes a fun out of me as a landscape photographer because now I was like, okay, do I just change the skies and not stay and pay another $400 for another night at the hotel? Like, I remember I went to Yosemite to do a shoot for four days. $400 a night was so expensive. I wanted to be in Yosemite. Did you stay in that, in that yes. one place, the cabin? Yeah, I didn't beautiful. stay in a big fancy four star. I was like $800 a night. I stayed in a, one next to it. I was like two, $300 a night. And it was pitch blue sky for three days in a row. 
and no then clouds. The, no clouds. And then I was like, and I looked at the weather, and it looked clouds for the next day. So I said, okay, I'm going to pay an extra night. I pay an extra night, and I hear snow during the night. It was it was in, in March, and I hear like big chuckles, and I look at it like four in the morning. And it's snowing like crazy. At six in the morning, I take my car and I go to the tunnel view, the famous you know yep, tunnel view, sure. which is the, the the iconic shot. And I take under the snow, and the snow is melting so fast. By the time I'm done with the shoot, the snow is gone. The snow was there from like maybe five to six thirty so, because the sun was burning so much. But a lot of snow was there, and I and I got it. I'm so proud, and you know, photo did really well in galleries and everything. You know, that's the work of a photographer. But it's true with this tool, it kind of sometimes takes the fun out of it, you know. But look, I I, I got to pay my bills, and if that's what sells, you know, I, I got a price. So I re, you know, all I showed you was sky replaced, everything went aura and luminar just to to punch it, you know. You know all these photos, especially this yeah. one. Like this is the original natural drama version, right? And that's the version, and that's still been processed, and that's still being processed. But right? you know, it's a long exposure, and right. it's and I pushed the colors maybe a little bit too much, and that's the one I'm getting to the galleries. You know, I added the luminar birds, and that's the luminar sky actually. You know, and I know that he's gonna love that because he knows nothing. So check this out: the CEO of Yellow Corner has never seen Photoshop in his life, but he says. He told me the other day, he says, I don't want to see one crane in one. You, you take a photo from Paris, I don't want to see one crane. I want a tourist out. If there's a car, like uh, whatever you have to do in Photoshop, this cloud's going to be amazing. Blah. And I, I couldn't. And it's like, look, that's what's selling. He says, one of the reasons I'm telling you this is because of the iPhone and the Samsung S22. Phones gotten so good over the last five, six years that people are being better photographers in a way. That was know? the thing I wanted to also pull out of what you said a moment ago. I wanted to pull out something that you said. Because you said it very quickly, and it was what the gallery owner said to you. Guys, I hope you're listening to this. Because he said it real quickly. Everybody can take a good photo today. Mm. Your phone takes good photos. You can buy a camera off the shelf, put it in auto mode. It takes great photos. You buy a mirrorless camera, you buy... I was going to say buy a DSLR, but they, <laughs> they don't really sell those. No. But mirrorless, you buy a camera. <laughs> you buy a camera. Any kind. You just get it like a camera. All right? And literally, anybody can take a good photo. Kids can take a good photo. Everybody's got a good camera. Everybody's got a phone that has a camera that takes great shots. Why in the world is someone going to pay to buy your photo if they feel like, just like what you said, they can go take it themselves? You need something different. This is something else that I talked about in my talk uh, last week at the NECCC is you, you better come up with a look. You better have something different since everybody mm. can, can make a great photo. Yeah, you know what's someone pay you? You know what's funny is you take an iPhone 13 and when there's a great sunset, back four years ago, you, would, you just don't even take the photo. You just put it up and it's got this huge dynamic range where nothing is silhouette anymore. You can see in the shadows, you can see the, and this guy looks amazing. It's already pre-processed because they have like, they have like Lightroom presets real time on, on an iPhone, right? Yep. It's already like sometimes I'm, because I'm, I'm taking a photo, I'm looking at my wife, it's, it's like, and it always gives me an idea of what it's going to look like at the end because it doesn't look like this in my mirrorless, you know, that it's looking like on the iPhone. So people are getting great shots, like great shots just because of the dynamic range. You know, if they take the effort of getting to, you know, you come to Paris, you are on the Alice on the Third Bridge and you have this incredible view of the Eiffel Tower and you are lucky to have a good sunset, you see a thousand people with their phones and they're getting pretty good photos, you know. Yep. So how do you stand out from that? Well, there is composition, I would say, you know, they usually put the water and I'm going to find that one statue, that one thing as a foreground element to make it a little more fancy. And then there is the magic of post-processing to just take it like the, the owner of the gallery said, look, when someone walks into my gallery, he's going to look at a photo and says, I am never in my world. I will be able to take that photo. Therefore, I'm buying it. That's what he said. Wow. There you go. We're getting a lot of comments here. Uh, let's just read a couple of them. Uh, Kevin Scott says, how does someone get started in getting their images into galleries? And also, our, we'll, we'll just... We'll start with that first. It's yeah, a two-part I have question. a couple of things on that if you want. All right, number one. Uh, and you know what? It's time for a break here. We're going to need a break in one minute. So let's just go ahead and take the break now. And, and then, then we'll we're gonna answer. Pick up, we're going to pick up with Kevin's, both of his questions, but there's other comments here. But I want to say one out to Scott down in Miami. No, he's not in Miami. He's in West Palm Beach. He's Ooh. No, no, he's not in West Palm Beach. He's down in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Scott, somewhere in South Florida, he says, hi, hi, Scotto and Serge. I love you both. We love you too, buddy. We're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back. We're going to pick up with that. How do you get, you get your images into galleries? We'll be right back.
Hey Kelby One members, we're back with another class and this class is all about demystifying panos and time lapses. We're out here at the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. This is going to be a basic class on how you can get up to speed. We're going to introduce concepts to you on how to scout for panos and time lapses. We're going to talk about gear we need for all this stuff and then we're going to go through different scenarios. We're going to shoot panos with multiple images where we go all across the scene showing the vastness of the landscape or the vastness of the Milky Way. And then we're going to do other things like time lapses where we can show motion in the clouds and the sun rising, even going from night to day and all done very easy where we can work up to more advanced techniques. But this is definitely something where we're going to be focused on the basics. So join me at my new class on kelbyone.com. Hey guys, I'm Tubby and I'm going to show you two really cool products that we at B-Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double-sided hyper-realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently. And they also, there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or, or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back. Scott here with uh, with Serge. And uh, it looks like Cheryl, Cheryl Cheryl says, I'm so excited to have Serge on. I really want to attend a Paris workshop next year. Don't we all? Don't <laughs> we all? I got to spend a few days twice with Serge uh, in, in Paris. and went out to Mont, Mont Saint-Michel. So I always tell this story of how you know, I, I tell Serge, hey, I'm coming to France and I want to go to Mont Saint-Michel. And he's like, well, my wife and I will join you and your wife and we'll all go. It was great. And I'm like, so you've been to Mont Saint-Michel? No. <laughs> I go, you live in, in, in France. I know. How, how far is it for you? Four hours. And you've never gone in your whole life. Nope. Well, I changed that because I just did four weeks of workshop. So I did one week workshop, one week rest, one week workshop. And every Tuesday, thanks to you, <laughs> We go to the Mont Saint Michel. We shoot there. We stayed, so we found a way to stay in the Mont Saint Michel. Oh, nice! It's part of the workshop. Yeah, we stay. We stay. You have to book a year in advance. You, we stay on the Mont Saint Michel, and then the next day we go exactly the place we went, which is Saint Malo, that other yep. big wall city, and we go in the same crepe shop. You remember the crepes oh. we got like on the top on, on the wall city? So that's what I've been doing with every student. And by the way, all my workshops have sold out except Paris. Check it out. Paris, <laughs> not bad. All right. So Kevin had a great uh, comment right before the break. So his, his question was, it was a question actually, how, it's two part, how does someone get started getting their images into galleries? If I have to give an honest thing on it, because this is a question I get all the time. How did you get into Yellow Corner? So I got into Yellow Corner for one reason and one reason only, because my YouTube channel was blowing up. That was the only reason that they took me. They have 200 photographers every day wanting to be part of the galleries. And so what the owner goes for, he doesn't really care about the, uh, the beauty of the photo that much. He does in a way, but there's great photographers everywhere. What he, t he wants either celebrities or something, something that's, that's special about him. Like he's blowing up on social media, he's being on a TV show, or there's articles written about him. Like he's got to stand out from the crowd some kind of recognition that it's going to bring people in the gallery because he's a bit famous. It's very sad to say, but that's the hard cold truth. So here's the story. I was, I've been, it took me five years to get into the gallery. I, I, I 
I, I kept, so there's a form you can go online and submit a photo. Nobody ever got picked from that form. I don't even know why it exists. It exists because there's demand for it. It's like the studios in Hollywood when you send your scripts. Nobody's ever going <laughs> to make a movie if you send a script, even with a lawyer. It's, unless you know a studio executive, it's just not going to happen. It's just they have someone there. They're just paying him to just shred the scripts. Read it, shred it, read it, shred it. <laughs> Uh, that's been my experience. I worked a little bit there. Anyway, same thing with Yellow Corner. They, nobody ever got picked up like this. What he does, he looks like what's trending, who's hot on social media, who is, you know, like, for example, I'm a good friend with uh, MySpace, uh, Tom Anderson, who's become a great photographer after saying his mind. He's like, oh, I want to get him. How can I, you know, how can I meet him? Because he was, you know, the sure. owner of MySpace, you know. So basically what happened is uh, one day I got the email of the owner. So I kept writing him and he never answered my email, except one time there was a big snowstorm in Paris. I got up all night, took some really amazing photos of snow, some sent to him and he says, oh, nice. Do you have anything more? Still nothing. True story. One day a buddy of mine, the guy who gave me the name of the owner was a very famous photographer who refused to work with Yellow Corner because he was selling his work for $25,000 a piece in New York. He's like, I'm not going to work with Yellow Corner. That's like $2,000. I'm beneath. That's above that. And he says, but you should do it with your stuff, you know, because, you know, that, literally like this. Anyway, so he gave me the name of the owner, and I and so I called reception. I got the email, and that's how I sent him the snow photo. Anyway, he calls me two years after. He says, and that was right after I did Photoshop World when I met you the first time. I sort of after Photoshop World got really better with my stuff. He says, your stuff is really good, and I started making YouTube tutorials. And eight years ago, when I started YouTube, every video I would do would get like 200, 300 thousand views. It was crazy because nobody was doing YouTube back then. You know, everybody's doing a Lightroom tutorial now. But back then, you know, it was very little. Anyways. So um, he says, you're blowing up on social media. You should tell Yellow Corner. Maybe they'll pick you up. So I went on YouTube and I looked how many subscribers Yellow Corner had. They only had 5,000. I was at 110,000. So I literally wrote to CEO says, I'm at 120,000 subscribers. You're at 5,000. Uh, maybe we should talk. And, and so I was on the phone with my friend. He was telling me to do that. I took the last email, the one he talked about, the snow thing. I answered and the phone rings literally 20 seconds after. And it's a number from Paris. And I joke with my friends. Can you imagine the CEO of Yellow Corner says, pick it up. I pick up and it's the CEO of Yellow Corner. Ah. And that's how I got the deal. And, and we've been very good friends ever since. And my, you know, my photos did really well in galleries. But he, show, he was showing me my photos. The ones that are doing really well are very, very sort of, a, you know, they have a little bit of a HDR look to it, you know. So I was like, all right. All right. Second part of Kevin's question. Are online places like Fine Art America worthwhile? Uh, I just started a Fan on America website and I did sell a little bit. Again, I have a big following. Not great. Like, I couldn't make a living out of it. No, right. Not as close as Yellow Corner. I think it's great. I have a, a friend, Lishal Wall. She's uh, from Florida and she does, she makes, she, she lives on, on Fan on America and she doesn't have a big following at all. So, Fan, I think Fan on America is great because they, do, they have great prints. Uh, it's a great way to start. I really think it's good. And also, it's based on the photos that you put up there. Yeah. Oh, one big trick on Fine America, if you want to do well, I have a, this buddy, Greg Alexander, who did a class for Kelby One, by the way, which I really like. And he has this thing where he, he has a way to find out what's selling. So he goes on the hottest trend of Fine America or Etsy, find out the keywords. I don't know how he does it as a software or something. And he reverse engineer what people are buying. And he does that kind of photography. I mean, and that's how you sell. That's smart. Yeah. All righty. Um, comment here or a question from... Roger? Roger. Roger. Roger says, uh, Scott and Serge, I'm just wondering if there's a difference between the U.S. and Europe. Americans seem to like overprocessed stuff like food, <laughs> overprocessed emotions, <laughs> movies, etc. A bit more than Europeans. Do you, you're just wondering. I, he's asking, you know, do you feel that that's true? I... I feel, you know, well, French culture has changed a lot with the internet. Like, you know, we love Marvel and we love, you know, a lot of American culture. The food is definitely, and I wouldn't say it's not overprocessed, it's just the, the ingredients are much better. Like the bread, the flour doesn't hurt your stomach that much. You know, there's a lot of stuff in France food yeah. that's, that's just really, uh, you know, and it's just like less fried stuff. So it's, it's, it is overprocessed. It's just, I would say it's like Peter Leek. It's really overprocessed, but done right. All right. So <laughs> to that, do you think that there really is a difference between the sensibilities of the U.S. and European print buyer because you saw a lot of prints in europe no mostly in europe no not not when it comes for print actually you know the again you know i realized this is you know if somebody walks into a gallery and say i can do that with my iphone why is he gonna buy it you know uh you gotta think about that 
Here we go. Uh, some more comments here. Dan Danielle says, I've seen some horribly post-processed work, but people will gravitate towards it because it's unexpected. And I think what Danielle is saying is, is right on the money. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's different. It looks different. It's not what you expect. It's not the regular picture that you see on your phone or on the back of your camera all the time. So all of a sudden it has a, you know, it, it has an allure to it. Uh, just some more comments. Lynn saying, hello, Serge. Hi, Scott. Thanks for this. Uh, uh, Deb says, Deb Sally is a good friend of mine. Hey, Deb. Hell, she's been on all my, uh, like, we just did Paris and Italy oh, together. nice. And Florida. I did a workshop in, in Florida. Did you? I, I did a test, yeah, starting in, uh, in Clearwater, Venice. We did the Everglades and Miami. Now, let me ask you, which is prettier, Venice, Florida, or Venice, Italy? Venice, Italy. <laughs> just <Not> checking. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been to Venice, Florida many times, and I've been to Venice many times. We don't shoot in Venice. We just do the Everglades and Miami and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, Oh, and then that park, keep forgetting the, this part that Clyde Butcher has been shooting a lot, the Maya, it's close to Venice, Mayaka Park or? Uh, yeah, Mayak State Park. Yeah. Mayaka State Mayaka Park. Mayaka State Park. Yeah, so we shoot true. a lot of that too. Biggest uh, getters I ever saw in my life, by the way, there. They're like huge. Oh, yeah. Be, be careful. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kim says, hi from sunny Oregon. And this is just a very nice comment. Uh, I watched the Lightroom course by Sarah a few years ago. He opened my eyes to the power and creativity of Lightroom. That's right. There you go. David's here from Englewood. And so... A little bit of everybody here today. So glad, very glad to have you guys here. But uh, I, I think uh, I wanted to show you guys a picture. It's going to take me just a moment because this is about uh, something Serge, Serge was talking about just a moment ago. And this is a picture from Rome. Let me just find it real quick. And the picture I spent a lot of time retouching. And the reason is, Ooh. let me open the picture here. Ooh. Let me get it big and all that. Give me just a sec here. Get rid of that. Love the full round, middle round, background. All right, so here's the photo. It, it could use some sky replacement, quite honestly. However, what I did do was I spent a lot of time removing. Ready? What did I remove from here? Antenna. Like satellite? Satellite dishes. Dude, it, it kills the romance. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of stuff that kills the romance oh, yeah. and he, kills the dream. Yeah. Dude, I go and get rid of all the antennas. The antennas don't bother me like it, like because antennas have been around for a long, long time. Hmm. But satellite dishes time stamp your image. Yeah. And I got rid of I I mean I, I went house to house. Really? Oh, you could probably find one in your side. I love Oh, there's see, one. For me, that's right down there. That yeah. A little tiny one. Ooh. That's natural drama to me. I like, you know, it's dramatic, uh, but it's natural. Like he would probably ask you to do sky replacement if you wanted to put it in the gallery. Yeah, and by the way, guys, <laughs> sky replacement is so easy. For those now, there are plugins like Luminar. That's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. I'm, I'm going to go do a sky replacement on this, and we're going to go try this. Mm. But can we talk a little bit about the tools that you use? So, what what are your go to? So, when I do the natural drama, I try to stay as much as I can in Lightroom. Like I love Lightroom. Lightroom is my core software, and then I basically. For the series I just did for the gallery, I use Aurora and Luminar because he loves the Aurora look. I know that because in a top five or top ten, you know, photos, there was always that HDR kind of look, and Aurora is really good at it. Actually, Luminar Neo, which I'm testing this week, apparently has an an HDR feature within Luminar, so you don't have to go. And this is not an ad for Luminar, but I have to say I really love their stuff, you know. So when I want to go, you know, when I want to create an emotional impact, I go with Luminar. If I want to stay natural drama, I try to. I like for me sky like sky replacement is not a thing that I do uh, if um, if I wanted to go like I like more without the you know the sky replaced you know uh, all right yeah. so I did a little sky replacement this is not the greatest uh, right sky but no. I just I want to show you how easy sky replacement is yeah. wow, if that you was have fast. have Photoshop yeah so what you do is this let me just undo this right so we get back to the original it's in Photoshop it's under the edit menu it's sky replacement. Yeah. It comes up, and you can use one of Adobe Sky. That's an Adobe Sky. So you talked about using a Luminar Sky. So Luminar ships with a bunch of sample skies. Yeah, and you can add your own sky. Just click plus, yeah. and you add your own sky. I have like a whole sky collection that I've been doing for years that I can just. Yeah, I've got my own. Uh, these are so, so these are some of my skies here. Yeah. And so there's different ones. Well, the key of sky replacement is you have to match the sky light with us. Yes. With, so the first sky you had was you know is a sky that would only happen after the sun has set. And so, right, and this sun, is clearly not. Yeah, but you know, yeah, that that could work. That could that could work. That's kind of cool. 
I'm not sure about you that. You know, I actually one. like your your because your white sky has a lot of mist into it, so it gives a lot of depth to the photo. So I really like it actually, without even the sky place, to be honest. You actually nailed it. Like I'm just messing with you when I said they would I don't know if they would ask you for. They just really enjoy that sort of HDR impressionist kind of look, you know. And again, like for example, I'm doing a new book. I'm not gonna use uh, this kind of tricks. I'm only doing it for the gallery, only for the money. Uh, I'm sold. It for I'm money. sold out as an artist. But you know, you got to be able as an artist. You got to be able to do everything. You got to be able to do crazy, over retouch stuff. You got to be, you know, right on the money. You know, if you have all the tools at your disposal, you just play around and do whatever you, the heck. Ooh, the, the heck you want with that? That's that actually matches really well. Yeah, and I've got folders of skies that I've shot just literally. And you know what? I, I was talking about this in, in my, my talk last week was, and, and if you're an aviation photographer, you know how this is, or even a travel photographer. You get up in the morning, it's dawn, you set up your tripod, everything's set up. You're all where you want to be. And here's this beautiful scene behind you, if not a cloud in the sky. But if you look over there, oh, look at back here. The, <laughs> the clouds are always on the opposite side of where you want to be. Absolutely. I and mean, I tell my students, we did that in Prague. We went to this one morning and the great sky, and there was a phenomenal sky right over there. <laughs> but but right where we need to shoot down these bridges down the river, nothing. And I'm like, everybody, go shoot that sky with the same lens. With the, Like if you're using a 16 and you're at like 20, you're six, like say you're using a 16 to 35 and you're at 20 millimeters, Go shoot that sky with 20 millimeters, and then you can put that sky into this scene. And you saw how easy it is. And, and as Serge mentioned, you can upload your you 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 don't want to use Photoshop skies. Yeah, they only give you a handful of them. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, someone go on, on uh, Instagram and go, "Oh, that's that's the default sky in Photoshop." Yeah, you don't want that. So put your own skies in there. It's very easy to shoot your own skies. Just look up in yeah. the sky. Yeah, the key thing, and yeah, that's a good thing. You know, being uh, at the beaches when you have, I, I do the sky collection at the beach because the, the water is very flat, so you, I get a lot of skies. But like, I, I take proud in in, in uh, of replacing the sky exactly what you said from the same. It was just a little bit more on the left, you know. So it's <laughs> it's the actual sky from the actual place yeah, from the we right just, place. Yeah, tweaked it, you know. Just tweak it a little. Hey, great comment here from from Rampton from Rami Kazami. He says, "There's no such thing as over processing if you know what you're doing." Yeah, that was now, my. Rami is amazing at, at his post processing. You know what? It's funny. So he's speaking at Photoshop World, right? Mm -hmm. So this week I see in Rami's feed, because I follow him on social, um, we have really nice uh, banners for the, the people that are teaching at Photoshop World. They're like a little, you know, like an Instagram story size mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we have four or five pieces of their work. And Ram, Rami's is beautiful. His, his, have you seen his last No, I have not. Dude, this guy is sick. Hey, let me just ask Jason in the, in the, in the booth. Is there any way we could run one of Rami's commercials? For one of his classes, like the trailer for his class. See if you've got one. Dude, his, he's ridiculous. Anyway, he puts it up and he says, I'm speaking at Photoshop World. What's the first comment? Did you, did you take these photos? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, they're that good. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he, like, like you have an, ad, an advantage in that you live in Paris. You've lived in Paris for many years. His advantage is he lives in Canada. He lives out in the wilderness in this beautiful area where some of the most beautiful landscapes mm. in North America certainly are made. So he does have that advantage, and he, he's willing to hike. I'm not willing to hike. You're shooting Yosemite from the parking lot where I <laughs> shot it from, right? He's like tenting and going out into tent and, and just really oh, – yeah. He's doing it the hard way where he's out there freezing ass cold, just crazy stuff. He's out there. It's, it's ridiculous. He goes whatever it takes to do it. He'll do it. But uh, – Let's see if we can, I don't know if they can find one, because we're going to have to take one more break here before we're done. We only have 11 minutes left, so we're, I want to take a quick break. Uh, great comment from Gina. Gina says, you can look at Warhol's art and today's over-processed photography, and you can see why it, why it works. Um, so, Mark, this is one of your students, the yeah. gentleman you mentioned earlier. He says, I love Serge's teaching, and, and, I, and thanks to him, I won some awards. But I find it quite difficult to sell photography in Europe. Uh, is it a matter of the topics or being at the right place at the right time, as Serge uh, explained? Social is maybe on the way, but, but not everyone loves it that much, especially platforms like Instagram are not favorable for photographers for some time now. True. Well, you know what, though? Instagram is going through a phase. Yeah. And they're trying going, to be TikTok. Yeah, they're trying to be TikTok, <laughs> and, and, and people are rebelling against it because we already have a TikTok. Yeah. And so, and, and some, it was, I think it was Courtney Kardashian. Now, she's one of the most followed people on Instagram is why I bring her up. 
She and she and they were, she was like, I hate this new Instagram. Hmm. When you get your biggest people starting to complain, like hmm. you've trashed this wonderful program, because that's the great thing about Instagram. Hmm. You're, you're seeing your numbers go down, not your, your followers. You're seeing your engagement go way, hmm. way down because all they care about is reels right now. Yeah. All they want and they're feeding uh, reels into your, your feed. It's ugh. but Mark. Facebook's done this. Everybody does it. They go through things where there's a time where all Facebook cares about is you putting up a video. And then they get back to where they were before because yeah. they, they want to push you in a, in a direction. And if it works, it works. But I don't think this is going to work because people are already on TikTok. They look at TikTok for one thing. They look at Instagram for something else. Yeah. They go to Facebook for something else. They go to Twitter to rant because they're upset. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's take a short break. When we come back, um, we, we, we... I had something on Mark that I wanted to tell him, but I'll tell him after the break. Okay, yeah, we'll do this right after the break. Stick around. We're going to wrap up with a couple more comments. We still have giveaways and stuff. Make sure you get your comments in because we're about to pull the winner. So stick around. We'll be right back. My name is Remy Kazemi, and I have a brand new and a very exciting, refreshing class for you this time that focuses on color. This is a very specific class on how to use the different simple tools that come with Photoshop to make the colors pop. But not only that, we're also going to be focusing on how to create separation because understanding color harmony is very important. And when you understand color harmony, then you can really start to create separation in your photographs and give it that depth that a two-dimensional file is missing. Now, I don't want you to think that this is only for landscapes, because when you talk about color harmony, you could use these techniques on anything, really. It could be portrait, it could be any style. We're going to be talking about different real-life photo examples, and we're going to go through them, and we're going to take these photographs to the next level. I want you to come and join me on my latest class exclusively at calbywan.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, we are back. I don't know if you caught the show last week, but we announced some very, very big news. My 13th annual Worldwide Photo Walk is coming up next month. It is August 13th, Saturday, August 13th in cities all over the world. New cities are coming on every day. So go to, photo, go to worldwidephotowalk.com. It's free. Everything's free. Uh, search. Uh, see where it says find a walk. Click at that link up at the top called Find a Walk. Type in your city. See if there's a walk near you and uh, and you can join. So far, there are 266 walks around wow. the world. I love doing walks. We'll, we'll have probably 1,000 by the time it's over. 
Uh, we're adding more. I am leading a walk in yeah, Edinburgh, good. Scotland. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I haven't been there since the day I got engaged 34 years ago. Uh, so oh, that's, 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 a, that's an exotic place to do a photo oh, walk. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, and then we're leaving from there with a bunch of buddies and my buddy Paul and my brother and Eric Kuna. And we're all heading up to the, uh, to the Scottish Highlands. But I'm going to be in person there. And I'd love to meet you uh, in Edinburgh. Now, uh, I was going to mention one other thing. Eric, where? Eric Kuna. I, is it just me or does he get does he get 48 weeks of vacation and then four <laughs> weeks of actual work that guy's never here <laughs> he's out gallivanting he's out shooting something somewhere and uh i, I really think that i've got to reevaluate my i don't have to reevaluate his vacation schedule his <laughs> is really good i need to reevaluate mine <laughs> i think i've taken one week this year so i, I gotta ah you gotta travel again it's so yeah. fun well i, I just travel three months it's the best Oh, I, I love traveling. I'm so happy to be traveling again. I can't tell you. Mm. And again, my, my next trip is, uh, I think it's that. I think it's, I'm going, to, going yeah. to London first, going to London and then Edinburgh. Then I have Tuscany in. Um, are you going back or is this your, Tuscany's right there? Right oh, there. no, no. These are two separate trips. Oh, okay. So you no, back. Tuscany's in, in October. So oh, this yeah. next one's in August. And so I'm just happy to be out there traveling again. All right. So we, we want to. Um, yeah, Mark was just saying, I just yeah, want to say Mark. something on Mark. Uh, Mark, uh, I, I know your photos and you're really good. The thing is you have to find what sells, whether it's Fine Art America or Etsy or Yellow Corner. You know, what is selling? You have to find a way to trace that and then create that. That's really the only thing that I've seen working. Of course, you know, when you get – Yellow Corner is really about celebrity social media people. Uh, you know, it's their thing. Or it could be like old celebrities. Like they love having, you know, like very – like uh, uh, Sebastian Saldago with his black and white. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he works with Yellow Corner. He's a good friend with the owner because he's like very famous. He's yeah. the best-selling, you know, books. Oh, one thing I'm going to say about books. Photographers don't buy other people's photos, but they buy other people's books. Yeah, I give I, them a, as gifts. People give me photo books as gifts. Yeah, like I – if you were to do your – great indoors book, which I'm hoping one day is going to come out. I'll buy it Me like too. Uh, right away, <laughs> you know, uh, because I buy a lot of other photographers' books, but not necessarily the prints. Right. Yeah. Not the prints. Uh, but you know what it is? I love to give a print as a gift and mm. I love to get prints. People have sent me uh, gifts. Uh, Diane sent me a beautiful print of, I saw it on, on the grid and she made me a big, beautiful print of these zebras from Africa and it's just an it's amazing picture and I have it here in the offices. So, uh, and, and when people give me a print, I think that's a, a yeah. very special and very it is, personal, it is, it is. personal thing. But again, we're not gonna buy the prints, but it, it is a great thing from, from one photographer to give to another. Yeah, sure. All right, let's see. Uh, Lisa Walsh. Lisa, Lisa says, I love Venice, Florida. It is nice, but if you're from Florida, you're like, oh yeah, it's Venice. <laughs> Richard and, O'Keefe. Oh, Richard. Richard says, hi, bonjour. Hi, Scott. Bonjour, sirs. Yeah, Richard. he was just with you in Prague. Uh, he was in Prague. In Prague and yeah. then he was with me in Paris. He's a cool guy. He's a yeah. lot of fun. He's got a great, great sense of humor, and he's a good shooter. Yeah. Good shooter and yeah. just a great sense of humor. He's a guy that really enjoys his life, and it's fun to be around people yeah. who have a, a joy Oh, living. he's just the best. Uh, let's see. Jane says, hello from a toast to Tulsa. <laughs> All right. We are, we're just about out of time. We're going to give you – we got some prizes to give away. Yes. Let's see who's winning what. First, Sharon, congratulations. Sharon Scharf, you won the Boris FX Optics. Uh, Rochelle, you, uh, Rochelle DeVrent, you just won the On One FX plugin. Uh, Angie Anthony Mossberg, you won the Platypod accessory kit. Mike Maxwell, you won my travel photography book. Paulo Pinero, you won uh, How Do I Do That in Photoshop? Uh, no, it's, it's how do I do that in Lightroom, actually, is the one. I haven't redone the how do I do that in Photoshop. It's, it's for next year. Uh, how do I do that in Lightroom? Uh, yeah, I'm updating that book next year. But you won that. And uh, you're going to get the print version, so you're going to have to wait about four weeks. But it will. we will send it to you. Uh, the V-Flat Duo Boards, which we didn't know we were giving away, <laughs> go to Ed Wiener. I love the V-Flat. And uh, my Lightroom book goes to Jim Beardsley. So congratulations to all of you. How do you get your books? Send an email to GridPrize at kelby1.com grid prize at kelby1.com tell us uh you know what you want your give us all your contact and your shipping info we will verify that you are actually you <laughs> that's an important thing and once we verify that then we will send you your goodies so and they'll be there very quickly it's nice we get lots of letters from people that won stuff you know we give away a lot of stuff every show i know i see that but you're thanks like to the, our, our you're sponsors like 
uh, Santa Claus. But our Santa, our sponsors are really awesome. Of course, I, I sponsor my own books, but you get yeah. the idea. We have 30 seconds left. Um, so, Serge, where can people learn more about you? Photosurge.com. Photosurge.com. There you go. And uh, you've got a workshop coming up in Paris. Yeah, I'm doing Iceland, but that's sold out. I'm doing two weeks in Iceland, sold out. Italy sold out, but Paris got five seats left. If you want to come? <laughs> I want to come. Dude, <laughs> come. Paris. There's, can I tell you something? I've done it. There is no one to see Paris with better that knows the greatest little <laughs> places, the hidden spots, the best restaurants. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there is nobody better than Serge to go to Paris with. Go to Paris with oh, Serge. Thank you for pushing for and showing them. Ooh, and they, oh, there's uh, Florence. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that, the, the one that one is really sold out. It got sold out in two days. It was crazy. Uh, people want to travel. Uh, now, that's the, the workshops. You have to click on workshops. Yeah, like click see, on workshops. See right workshops. There, see workshops. And uh, so you see that's, that was Venice that's sold out. Thank you for showing that. That's really nice. And then uh, if you go down a little more, you got the Paris workshop. This one, June 3rd to 10 and June 17, 24. Still has some seats left. I promise you, you will come back with photos like nobody's business because you're going to be there at exactly the right time in exactly the right place. You're going to learn exactly the right techniques. You're going to have a wonderful experience. I've done it. I've done it with him. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> yeah, and we're doing Mont Saint-Michel too. So it's Paris oh, and Mont Saint-Michel. Mont... Thanks to you. <laughs> Mont Saint-Michel. Hey, I, I do have to tell you an interesting story. You may have heard this before if you've heard me talk about my trip to Mont Saint-Michel. So this is when I, when Serge and his wife met my, my, my wife and myself. We drove four hours in the driving rain. Just rain, rain, rain. And I'm thinking, here it is. I've always wanted to shoot Mont Saint Michel. It's pouring rain. It's an awful sky. It's terrible. We pull up to the parking lot. Awful rain. Terrible. And Serge says, and he points up to the sky. And there's this little spot of blue. There's this little tiny area. And he goes, I don't know, Scott. I don't know. So it's a, it's about a half an hour, 25 minute walk. It's a flat walk on a little road. You used to be able to drive down it. Now you're not allowed. The public's not allowed to drive on it. That leads you to the to the to the island. That's you. That's actually on sale, and you are in my photo. Oh, take a look at that. Yeah, if you can show it, that that is Scott Kelby. You can see in small here. That's and, me. Small. And that's us in the back of Mont Saint Michel. What was funny? It was a gray sky, and we we started walking around, and we just had this incredible. You know, it's a little overprocessed by gradients, a little strong. You have done this what ten years ago, but ten uh, years ago. yeah, and it was scary because there was a lot of us. Yeah, that's, sand. so that's what I was going to tell you. <laughs> As you're walking out onto this, onto this, uh, so this is either filled with water, and at a certain time of day, all the water goes out, and at low tide, it's dirt, <laughs> uh, and it's it's you know like ocean bottom or whatever you want to call it. So. We, we're, we're getting ready to walk out there, and there's literally a sign that says, Danger Quicksand. Dude, don't go. <laughs> so, of course, our wives look at us and go, you can't go out there. And Serge and I are like, oh, no, it's not really quicksand. No, it's fine. We'll be okay. And they're like, no, you can't go. At Danger Quicksand. We're like, it's not really quicksand. And here's what saved us. The only reason why we have these shots is because... We saw another stupid photographer. <laughs> and Serge and I are like, look, look, they're out there. They're not in the quicksand. Here was my first time. I don't know what and to so, expect. And so they, they, they were very happy. They have their arms folded and they're like, mm, I don't know, <laughs> you know, okay. So they let us go. So Serge and I are going out there. And so here's what happens. We're walking and it's okay. And then Serge says, oh my gosh, look at this. And he taps his foot on the ground. <laughs> and he goes, and the, it moves like jello. It goes, <laughs> but like on like 15 feet or something. It's, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we realized. It's quicksand, <laughs> but it's not the kind of quicksand you see in the movies no. where you're up to your neck and you're holding for a tree branch. <laughs> what it is, is you go down about a foot. That's it. But when you go down that foot, you can't get back out. <laughs> like you need someone to help you out. Like if you go down that foot, you it's like concrete on your feet. You're standing there. Only this much of you is underground, <laughs> but you are stuck. So what you have to do is you just have to keep moving. Like you keep just walking around, you set your tripod down and you keep moving. You don't want to stop. Well, one time I set my tripod down and I want to set my setting for a bracketed shot. I'm right, literally, I'm right where I'm standing over there in that shot. I put it up and I noticed that the tripod <laughs> is going down. It wasn't the tripod. It was me. I was sinking down. And if Serge hadn't been there to grab my hand and help me out, I'd still be there. I'd be underwater. Yeah. Because here's what they warn you about. They said that when the ocean does come back in, and this is exactly the way they describe it, it comes in like, 
like horses run it it yeah, races the speed in. of a horse. It's actually twice per month the speed of a horse. And the other month is actually pretty fast. You have people put, putting surfing boards and with like young guys and waiting for the wave to, to – because it's a wave coming. So if you get stuck and the wave is coming in your, you know, not in the best shape, you a can month, be in trouble. A month before we were there, a woman by herself died out there, yeah. got stuck, and it came in and drowned her. Yeah. So the, the, it, well, when you're with me, I know the place. I, I look at the tides, you know. Yeah. He, he nobody died. but Nobody died, and he <laughs> saved me because I, I would have been dead. But it's not, it's not one to do by yourself. I'll no. tell you that. Oh, no, no, if no. If you want to go with a group or some buddies or something, it is not. Don't go out there by yourself. It just, and I, I've got a nice shot from there somewhere. Let me just hit my uh, hit my search for Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel. Mont. Yeah, this place is, is. It really reminds me of Game of Thrones because it's got this sort of unique look. You know, that's uh, that's kind of crazy. Let me. See I love which your shot from Mont Saint Michel. My favorite, maybe this one. Well, that's probably not my favorite, but that's that's one. Can you see my machine? That's. I was next to you when we. Other play. machine. Yeah, sir. This is where we're right there. <laughs> what a place. Oh, there it is. Okay. What yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's very magical and, and very... Thank you, Scott, for introducing me to a place I oh, didn't know. Oh, yeah, right in your own country there, a few <laughs> hours away. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in today. Uh, let's see. Lots of, uh, lots of real quick comments here. Uh, Linda says she's looking forward to the walk. Uh, Rivaz. Rivaz? Am I saying that right? Uh, maybe not. But anyway, thank you very much. Uh, you enrolled on the London photo walk. I, I led a walk in photo in London and loved it. Uh, Doug wants to know any food tips today. Yes, Doug, wait a minute. I've got a new food tip. I was mesmerized by your bread oh. this, at lunch. But. Oh, yeah. I, I, so I went to, I went to, we went to Chili's for lunch today and I brought my own, you know, the keto Franz, F R A N Z. Oh my Franz God. I bought keto them right buns. away. He bought them while we were sitting there at the <laughs> table. And I had a, you know, Chili's old timer, put it on my bun. It went from like 70 carbs down to one carb one carb and it's the bread i tried all of the of the low carb breads it's the only one that is really really good <laughs> however i my wife found these they are keto crackers unfortunately i cannot remember the name next the, show come next week on no the but they, I'm, they're crackers and you can have 15 of them for two carbs <laughs> they're but they're really good they actually taste they're they are, they are almond they're made of almonds and they're almond crackers. Let me see if I can find them. You know, usually when I say this, the control room, somebody in the control room is already looking on Amazon. But I found it at Costco. Or my wife did, actually. She found it at Costco. Costco has an artichoke dip, artichoke spinach dip or something that's phenomenal. And with these crackers, the dip's like two or three carbs. 15 crackers for two carbs. That's really good because 15 crackers, crackers from anything else, even like wheat crackers, is like 19 carbs. Mm. It's two now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it real quick. Serge, tell them more about you. Okay, so, Where yeah. are you from? Tell us your life I am story. from uh, Paris, uh, 14th district, Montparnasse, a beautiful area. <laughs> now, it's funny, you know, there is uh, so much people. I was all over Italy and France, and so much people are traveling. Like, it, it's so good to be able to travel again and take photos. I, You know, for two years, I couldn't do it. I'm really, really happy. Uh, you know, I was really worried that people were going to cancel me with, you know, other stuff, bad stuff happening in the world. Turns out not at all. Like people are really traveling more than ever, which is really nice. I'm, you know, you're going to Tuscany. Yeah. Somebody was asking, when is your Tuscany workshop? When are you going to Tuscany? Uh, it's in October. And October. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I already gave the pre-announce to the folks that I've yeah. uh, been to one of my workshops. I'm about to send out the one to everybody that is on my email list. Trying to find yeah, it. Yeah, he's staying. He's going to be staying at San Quicodorcia. San Quicodorcia is a small walled city, and is the place to be if you want to get great photos. Just like ten minutes away, like right the hotel he's staying, you have what I call the Eiffel view of uh, Tuscany. It's it's a little hill. It's called Bella Donna. It's a little hill where you have a, a mansion. If you go on 500px and type Tuscany or Google, it's the first photo you'll find. Literally from his hotel room, he's be able to shoot it because it's actually by the pool. Of the hotel then there is the roman bath which is unbelievable like 20 minutes away you got um, they shot gladiator there so you've got the the little church uh, uh, i'm tipping uh, giving all the uh, you know the locations all the to, locations to that's Scott. okay you know we're I, gonna go there and shoot them okay, all right sorry. so this is one that i have at my house and I, I have this one right now this is the other one i use so these are pep pepper jack crisps they are they are super low in carb uh, it's 10 protein per serving and it, what it is it's actual cheese so it's a crunchy cheese snack, but it, it tastes like a cracker. So you put stuff on top of it. I put cheese on top of it. So it's cheese upon cheese. All right. But, keto, keto. But zero. <laughs> look at this. Zero. Uh, keto friendly. 
10 grams of protein, zero sugar, gluten-free. It's really, really good. And I wanted, I was going to see if they showed how many carbs, but it's very, very low because that's, you know, that's what I'm all about. I can't find the other crackers. I'll have to say that, but I would say that this is in my house right now and we keep getting more of them. They're, they're really, really good. They're great with cheese because it, it doesn't taste like too much cheese. In fact, I'm not sure if you can have something that tastes too much cheese. All right. <laughs> AJ says, I just signed up for a walk in Miami. Becky says she loves Serge. John says he loves Serge's coffee table books. I have them all, and I hope to make books like that one day of my own. There you, you go. Uh, yeah, you, you mentioned that you had to ask, when am I going to Tuscany? October, it's in early October, like first week of October. And again, watch my website on Friday or Saturday. I think I'm going to be releasing the public the public announcement. But I wanted to give people that have been to one of my other workshops the first sh chance to, to get it. And... Uh, uh, Jerry says, inspired once again, another great one for the grid team. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to my crew here, to Jason in the booth, to Juan, uh, who was doing the uh, commenting today, to Eric on the cameras. I'm sure Victor, I haven't seen Victor today, but I feel his presence. Hmm. Ron on the streaming. Thanks to all of you guys. And thanks to my very special guest, who is American. He's from Florida, and he <laughs> talks like this. That's right. Because that's how Floridians talk. I've been down Florida a long time ago, and I'm happy to be here, guys. There you go. We'll <laughs> okay, you merci beaucoup, mesdames et messieurs. Thank you, Scott, for having me. <laughs> <laughs>